<laughs> That's weird. I don't get how it works. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to Tech for Psych. It's Dr. Cody Raw here, your medical doctor confidant. So I've been using this device for the last few weeks. You might have heard of it before. It's called NextMind, and it's supposed to allow you to navigate video games, TV, the internet, just with your mind, just by looking at different objects it supposedly can activate different parts of the software like play buttons or volume, you know, different things that you would imagine brain computer interface would allow you to do. It has EEG sensors and it picks up the brain waves off the back of your head. Now the back of your head is where the occipital lobe of the brain is where all the visual information is processed. Now there have been some other videos already on YouTube talking about NextMind and what I'm not gonna do is fall into just doing an unboxing or product review for you. I'm gonna put this thing in context of other neurotechnologies that are already out there and also really put this thing to the test. Let's take a look at the science and see if this device is actually doing what the company purports that it will be able to do for you. Now if this device actually worked, this could be a huge breakthrough. Video game programmers for virtual reality, augmented reality, they are really taking brain computer interface seriously. They want to use brain data to enhance the experience of video games and in learning environments in those virtual and augmented reality environments. And having a device that actually could allow you to select different icons on the screen just by reading your brain data alone could be a massive breakthrough. What I'm really excited about is if this device is really working, this is an incredible opportunity for people that are doing software development to get a hold of the software development kit of NextMind to start designing the next generation of video games. You could be the groundbreaking, cutting edge developer that is doing something that very few people are doing right now and get ahead of the curve. Now the advertising of this company makes some pretty bold claims. It claims that you just see shapes of objects and that the technology can figure out what shape of object you're looking at and use that to allow you to navigate through things with their mind. Now in a 2019 presentation, the founder Sid Queter said that there was three things that they really needed to improve to allow this device to be able to actually do what they purport that it can do. Number one, increase the ability of machine learning to identify patterns in the EEG signal to allow the software to respond to what you're looking at. Number two, improve the actual hardware. Improve those sensors so that it can pick up the best data coming from your brain so that the computer can respond to that signal. And number three, ongoing neuroscience research. If we understand how the brain is operating, like just the fact that the visual information is processed in the back of the brain, this is all information scientific information that can improve our understanding and ability to harness the power of the brain in brain computer interface. The problem is that EEG signals are messy. Our brain produces electrical signals by firing neurons in different cadences to allow our brain to be able to do what it does. The problem is this signal gets propagated through cerebral spinal fluid, the skull, and it gets scattered all over the place. And there's a lot of noise. There could be muscle tension and movement and all these different things that cloud up the signal. So in order for the computer to understand what you are looking at just through the EEG signal is a big challenge. There's a lot of things that need to be improved in order for this to happen. And that's why this was so exciting to get tested on because I, you know, the advertisements were exciting. So I was really excited to test this out and we're gonna show you how it went in this video. So one thing that I did for this video is I had a few of my friends and family try the device and I got some fun reaction footage here with feedback about the technology from people that are not in the neuroscience field. Pull up different channels and stuff. <laughs> That's weird. I don't get how it works. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Like you said, it's weird, right? Like, why is it weird? Because it feels like you should be doing something. Like it's just happening when you're like looking at it. It's very odd that it's just like picking up through your brain what you're doing, not like your eyes are where they're actually like looking. I think you're gonna. I'm going to get better the more you practice focusing. It's like a new skill you. I'm learning. I think it just needs to modify like ease of use. Yeah, but I think once they start picking up and make it more ease of use with the sensor and start picking up more like quickly the frequencies. Yeah. Uh, I think it's just sensitivity. 
Yeah. I think it'll be able... Once they have better data, it'll be... Yeah, more I think so. I more. think, yeah, I think it has huge potential. Of note, I did have my friend's 10-year-old son try the device, and he really liked it. Like, he wanted to keep playing the game late into the night. And I found this very encouraging because it really will be his generation that takes this technology into full maturity in the next five years or so in the video game space. So it was amazing to see this thing work. I could not believe it when I was looking at the screen and quite quickly it would pick up where exactly I was looking and navigate through the screen. And I've told several people that I've been collaborating with about this is that I feel like all these other devices that I've reviewed, there's a little bit of a leap of faith. With the Muse, it is reading your brain waves and you go through the meditative experience, but it's difficult sometimes to understand or tell that really is responding to your brain waves. Even some of the other brain computer interface devices like Neurosity or Emotive, you can get little cars going or affect different devices, but you know, there's a little bit of skeptic in there. There's, is this thing really responding to my brain waves? They are, but it can be difficult to overcome that gap unless you have more experience with it. This thing, the second you throw it on, it's like plug and play. You calibrate and then you look at the screen and you can navigate with this device reading your brain waves. And I can't think of a device that has come out yet that actually has that impact factor. I'm really excited to be using this device in conferences and other environments where I'm talking about these technologies. And in order to get that wow factor, in order to get that impact with these technologies are real, they're picking up your brain data, and you can do some amazing things with them is going to be this device because it really is that easy to throw on and start navigating through the screen by using your brain waves alone and it's very accurate the hardware itself is lightweight at 60 grams with nine high quality eeg electrodes and a lithium polymer battery that lasts for eight hours at a time the device connects to a charger through a usb-c cable and uses bluetooth to communicate with your computer the SDK runs off of Unity and can run off both Windows and Apple with testing performed and approved on Oculus and HTC Vive VR headsets and Microsoft HoloLens 1 and 2. The headband is well padded, elastic, and comfortable to wear around your head. You can easily adjust for different head sizes. And in addition, the EEG electrodes are on a spring system that allow for conforming to your head's unique shape, making the device quite comfortable to wear. Now, truth be told, they are pushing the envelope in their marketing a little bit. Is it actually the shape that is being picked up in the occipital lobe or is it the flashing patterns of light? And it becomes apparent when you're using this that it is the different flashing patterns of light associated with the different controls that actually allow the EEG signal to be strong enough for the computer to respond to the visual patterns that are being projected in your occipital cortex. Now, obviously NextMind cannot reveal all their secrets to me as that is proprietary information, but they did refer me to an excellent post by neuroscientists scientist Patrick Menial on Twitter that explains the science very well. So there's something called the fovea of your eyeball that collects the light of your central vision and is of the clearest quality, while the rest of the retina collects light that makes up your peripheral vision, which is less sharp. It turns out that central and peripheral vision cells project their information to slightly different areas of the occipital cortex that the NextMind device can analyze through EEG. If you look really close at these boxes, you'll notice small white lines with shadows. These white lines are separate from their shadows with the clarity of central vision but tend to blur together into gray in peripheral vision. So each flashing light in these games has its own pattern and with central and peripheral visual information being unique from each other and projected in slightly different areas of the visual cortex, the EEG signal differences between flashing lights and patterns are maximized and large enough for the machine learning classifiers of NextMind software to better identify which flashing box you are looking at at any one time. So although this flashing pattern mechanism might be a little different than the device simply knowing what shape you're looking at, as the marketing might suggest, it's still a huge step in the right direction. And as we'll see, this technology will continue to quickly improve into some fascinating capabilities. Now, this is not to dock or say that this technology is not amazing, but you have to understand that they have to get the marketing out there. They have to stimulate your imagination and 
it still works. It's this flashing signal. And I've spoken to uh, the company and they are continually improving their hardware, their software, and their algorithms so that we'll get more and more accurate. And I have no doubt in my mind that Brain Computer Interface will get to the level at which it will be understanding what you were looking at. Not only just simple shapes, but complex patterns. We saw in Mary Lou Jepsen's TED Talk that by using fMRI, you could actually put screen by screen what a person was seeing and what the computer thought that they were seeing and the similarities are striking. So computers really can decipher from brain data alone what someone is looking at, but we need higher fidelity data. The functional MRI machines that those studies used cost millions of dollars, but exciting new technology is coming out. I hear about new technology every week that is pushing the envelope and there are different modalities EEG, MEG, FNIRS, these are all coming very quickly. All these companies are very aware of the different modalities and exploring each one, both to increase data fidelity, but also to lower cost so that we can have consumer wearables that are using our brain data to do things in brain computer interface. And this company is definitely in the right direction of communicating with the consumer market what is possible through this technology. Currently listed on the website for $399 for the developer kit. This device is comparable in price to other consumer brain device wearables that I've reviewed on this channel. I would most highly recommend this device for programmers that want to get ahead of the curve in creating virtual and augmented reality video games that utilize brain data or other modalities that involve sight and focus. So don't miss out. There's been a couple of great YouTube videos on this device already that have programmers designing games. I'm a doctor. I never grew up uh, designing software and creating video games so I can't show you that here but there's some really great resources already coming out on YouTube using Nextmind to create video games and if you are a software developer as I said before get your hands on the software development kit and really start designing video games that use brain data in order to establish yourself as a subject matter expert and be ahead of the curve. The founder of Valve video games the ones that made Counter-Strike and countless other classic video games Gabe Newell, he said in a recent interview that if you are designing video games and you do not have a brain computer interface device in your lab to start understanding brain data, you are gonna be behind the curve by next year, 2022. So think about that. Thanks so much. I hope you enjoyed this review. I really enjoyed this device and I'm going to be taking a look at it, trying their different beta testing programs. I really appreciate Nextmind for sending me their device to share with this audience. And my name is Dr. Cody Rawl. This is Tech for Psych. Please subscribe. Talk to you next time. Thanks.